Yes, every year it happens. This is the one that put the mobile part of India on the map, the Indian Mobile Congress, IMC, and this is the 2019 edition. Now, when it started off at that time, I said, this is a dream come true for me because every single time I go abroad to any of these events from the Mobile World Congress to CES, I always used to come back and say, why don't we have one in India? IMC finally fulfilled that and boy, have they done an amazing job. Now, this is absolutely buzzing out here. It's fantastic, it's great. We'll show you a lot of things from here. I want to mix it up, not just IMC. There's a whole lot more. Let's get started. This is our special coverage of IMC 2019 and a whole lot more. This year, India Mobile Congress was all about 5G and future tech. Watch what is in store for all of us and all the 5G brands that you need to know on the show today as we are at the India Mobile Congress 2019. Xiaomi launched the Redmi Note 8 Pro with 64 megapixel quad rear camera setup. Is the Note 8 Pro the best in the segment? And we got the Asus Rogue 2 to grill in the studio. Find out if it is the ultimate gaming phone in the market. Of course, all the excitement totally and absolutely building up out here. It's very crowded now, really buzzing at this present moment. Lots of news and headlines from here, but there is news coming in from the rest of the world, including the Pixel, the 4 version of the phone. I think there are a few people waiting for this phone too. Google debuts the Pixel 4 at an event in New York, along with the Pixel Buds and the Pixel Book Go. The Pixel 4 has been the most leaked product of all time and now it is official. The new Pixel comes in two sizes, a regular size 5.7 inch and an XL model that has a 6.3 inch display. The Pixel 4 also has a new 90Hz display. Google has changed the design of the Pixel 4 quite a bit and like the new iPhones, the Pixel 4 and the 4XL 2 sport a square island hosting dual cameras at the back. While there is no notch in the front, the top bezel does host a lot of motion sensors and an 8 megapixel wide angle lens. The rear camera block includes a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 16 megapixel telephoto lens. There is improvement in the night sight mode and now there is an astrophotography option for all those times you're stargazing and want to capture the moment. There is no fingerprint scanner now on board as Google claims they have the fastest face unlock in the Pixel 4. Apart from optics, Pixel 4 is all about gestures. There are a lot of gestures at play in the Google Pixel 4 like you can simply wave your hand to dismiss incoming phone calls and you can also hover your hand above your phone when your alarm goes off and it will quiet the alarm. Google Pixel 4 comes with a new recorder app which also features live transcribe. While the Pixel 4 and the 4XL look amazing, they won't be coming to India and here is why. Google said that it only determined availability on a variety of factors and had decided not to launch in India. Tech analysts speculated the issue was with its motion sense feature, which uses a radar frequency not allowed in India. And of course, let's move on to our absolute top story. And this is a big one because it's just been announced just a few days back. This is the Redmi Note 8 Pro. And the reason I'm doing it from here at the Mobile World Congress is because this is the first phone ever with the MediaTek G90T. Now, remember when we spoke about the G90 series, I said that this can actually be the game changer. You'll be able to have incredible phones that can be incredible gaming phones that have a lot of other capabilities. For instance, this has four cameras in it. But the real essence of it is that the big brain, the big capabilities are coming from the MediaTek G90T. And then the aggression in price also comes because of that. This could be a game changer for MediaTek for sure. Here's our full detailed review. The number eight can be tricky. It can be lucky for some, unlucky for others, but what will it be for Xiaomi? Xiaomi has launched the Redmi Note 8 and the Redmi Note 8 Pro at an event in New Delhi, and we have the Pro version for review. But can the Redmi Note 8 Pro fill in the shoes of the super successful Redmi Note 7 Pro and walk better? We find out. The main highlight of the Redmi Note 8 Pro is that it features a 64MP quad rear camera setup. So let's first deep dive into the optics of this phone. There is a 64 megapixel primary sensor, a secondary 8 megapixel sensor with an ultra wide angle lens, and then there are two 2 megapixel sensors, one with an ultra macro lens and the other one supporting depth sensing. The optics are AI enabled. There is a 64M mode which clicks 64MP Ultra HD pictures which came out really well. 
It's easy to switch between the lenses while clicking photos and the results with the wide angle were pretty decent. The same lens shift can be done in the video mode as well. There is a night mode on board for low light photography and while it is good, it's not as good as the ones we've seen on premium phones. Then there is a portrait mode which is impressive and also a micro lens option that allows you to go as close as 2 cm to the subject to click some unbelievable shots and videos. For selfies, the phone houses a 20 megapixel camera sensor at the front along with beauty mode. Now coming to the 8 Pro design. When we first looked at the phone, we were reminded of the Huawei P30 Pro a little bit, but we think it's just because of the aura white color we got and the gradient finish of it. The other colors of the Note 8 Pro look beautiful as well. The phone isn't as light and thin as we'd like it to be, but it is comfortable to hold. There is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 coating on the front and the back, and this phone is splash resistant too. There is a 3.5mm headphone jack on board and a fast fingerprint scanner at the back. There is Face Unlock 2 which works well. The Redmi Note 8 Pro is a beast and it's a gamer's delight because it comes with a MediaTek G90T chipset on board. The G90T is a powerful gaming chipset which can handle all tasks with ease. We got the 8GB plus 128GB variant of the Redmi Note 8 Pro and we were amazed at the smooth performance of this phone. It also comes with Xiaomi's liquid cool technology to ensure the phone maintains its cool while we play games like PUBG all day on it. The phone we got was running an MIUI 10.4.2 on top of Android 9, though we can expect the MIUI 11 update coming to this phone soon. There is a dark mode just in case you like that color scheme. The Redmi Note 8 Pro is India's first smartphone to launch with Amazon Alexa built in. It's the world's first smartphone with dual wake, which allows Redmi Note 8 Pro to interact with both Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa simultaneously. There is a 4500 mAh battery that supports 18 watt fast charging support which makes the phone last a complete day with full charge. Xiaomi's new Redmi Note 8 Pro has been priced starting at 14,999 rupees with 6 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage. There will also be a version with 6 GB RAM and 128 GB storage for 15,999 rupees and finally the top end version with 8 GB RAM and 128 GB of storage for 17,999 rupees. The Selguru verdict Priced starting at 14,999, the Redmi Note 8 Pro is yet another efficient and reliable phone from Xiaomi with one of the best cameras in this segment. We have no doubt that this phone will be a star of Xiaomi's 8 series portfolio and the number 8 will prove lucky for the Mi brand. As I roam around here at the India Mobile Congress, there's lots of exciting stuff and I've already shown you some of it. But I think true excitement comes from 5G because this is where the future lies. And now it's not something in the distant future, it's just around the corner. And I think everybody's getting very serious about it, including the fact that the government has said that even the licensing has to be much, much more economical for it to make sense. That means everybody now seems to be on board. I'm going to take you through all the 5G, the announcements, the demos, everything happening out here at the India Mobile Congress. The third edition of the India Mobile Congress was all about 5G. From connected cars to medical use cases, there were many demos around this hot topic. And with the upcoming 5G trials in the country, all eyes were on new technologies ready for networks to adopt. Huawei showcased dual band technology along with a seamless shift from 4G to 5G on the same spectrum for networks. Do you believe that Huawei became more a victim of politics between various countries like US, China or otherwise, it's a possible. But you know, for us, actually it's a very simple. We just uh, focus on what we should do. Try our best, make it better, better, perfect. So that's what we are doing now. That's the approach okay. we are follow. When India has 5G, are you quite confident, would you take a bet right now, the fact that Huawei will be part of 5G in India? How confident are you? Very honestly share with you, from the very beginning, I have my confidence. Ericsson showcased a wide range of use cases, including a smart 5G ambulance and a 5G connected band. Ericsson turned up the rock and roll quotient ad IMC this year, with two members of a band playing from a different location, but brought together using 5G. 
5G data speeds were also seen at the Ericsson booth on 5G enabled smartphones. So in my hand is the future. You must be saying what? I mean you're just holding a normal phone, right? Totally and absolutely wrong. Watch what happens. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Lots and lots of things about this Huawei folding phone that are dramatically different from anything else you've seen, including the fact that this entire thing folds in and this becomes your full screen. So you've got a full screen experience, no bezels, no borders, nothing out here. And when you open it out out here and it folds out, again, this is almost zero bezel, no borders, no notches, nothing. And the part that I really love about this, the mechanism is solid, absolutely solid. This is serious engineering. And then it's got literally like an eject button out here, I'm gonna show you. So to open it, you press this button, and this very beautifully just opens out. I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna show you some more stuff here at Huawei. Take a look. On a did unveil its new TV with a pop-up camera, but it was a Huawei Matex that caught our attention. The foldable phone was showcased at IMC with a side panel with three cameras and one camera in the front. The screen when folded out is around 8 inches and is a complete touch display. There is a 5G enabled phone as well but there is no news on when this will hit home shows just yet. I'm here at the MediaTek booth and you know MediaTek, one of my favourite companies, also the heart and brain not just of your phones but so many other devices. But you know this is a very very large booth and Sanjana is on the opposite side having some great fun with gaming, gaming characters. They've actually got PUBG characters out here. She gets to actually have fun with them. I get to do this with you. So she's got that. And there's a lot of other great technologies that MediaTek is showcasing. Now, the one part I always talk about is the fact that MediaTek, mainly known for, known for their chipsets in phones, actually does great chipsets for so many more things. That incredible OnePlus TV that has come out, Almost no one knows that it actually powered the smarts of that TV, all the cool stuff that TV can do, everything is actually powered by MediaTek. So let's go to Sanjana and find out what else does she have. Well, I'm all PUBG ready at India Mobile Congress. As you can see, some of the characters have come to life right here at the MediaTek booth where they've showcased their new G90T chipset. In fact, some of the phones on this episode have come out with this chipset. It's known for gaming, so we'll test that out right here. But other than this, there's also a connected home demo that we'll take a look at and a lot of other 5G use case scenarios showcased here by MediaTek. Yes, it was all fun and games at IMC as well with companies showcasing its latest tech in innovative ways. MediaTek showcased its game-centric G90T chipset with a live PUBG demo. We also got a glimpse at a connected home that is powered completely using MediaTek's technologies, right from a Broadlink power strip to a smart holder for bulbs to even Amazon Echo Spot. The new OnePlus TV that has just launched is also powered using MediaTek. On the 5G side of things, MediaTek put its M70 5G modem on display through various technologies on the screen. So lots more still to cover at the IMC and otherwise lots of other devices also. But of course, it's time to take a break. the 5G part of the Indian Mobile Congress gets stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, when you're here at the Indian Mobile Congress, it seems like 5G has already been launched because the demos out here are so incredible that you feel like, wow, I need to have this now, I need to have this today. Let's take a look at all the demos that Nokia has showcased out here at the IMC. Nokia also jumped into the 5G demo bandwagon with a creative display of a 5G enabled farm. Imagery of trees that bear ripe fruit to a farmer using 5G. The drone can also let the farmer know which patches of his field are not yielding a productive output. There are also sensors that can transfer detailed and real time information on the soil and water content in the field. All this information can be viewed by the farmer in real time on a dashboard on his phone. 
Like Ericsson's 5G ambulance, a similar remote MediHelp 5G setup was showcased by Nokia at IMC as well. Of course, let's move on now to one of our top stories, and that is the Asus ROG2. Asus really threw down the gauntlet when they said, we will make a true gaming phone when they came out with the first ROG. Very successful, really built them up as an incredible phone maker. But the ROG2 goes to a whole new level. From the kind of things this phone can do, the specs, the looks, the feel of this phone, this feels like the most solid phone I've actually held in my hand in a very long time. And so many things in this phone that are dramatically different from anything else. So we'll do this review in two ways. We'll take a look at the phone in itself as a high performance phone and we'll look at the gaming aspect. Gone are the days where smartphones were hiding in the depths of their own niches. Phones are now gunning to be all-rounders and the Asus ROG2 is no exception. It comes in as a successor to the game-centric ROG phone that was launched last year. And so in this review, we find out if the second variant manages to truly break out from the niche and yet max out on performance as a great phone. Well, it's time to get our gaming gloves on and fire this beauty up to find out. The Asus ROG2 goes on with its gamer look. It looks like a rush of adrenaline with the ROG logo lighting up at the back and angular accents. It is a bit heavy to hold but we can't complain looking at the heavy duty list of specs this phone comes loaded with. But one of the best parts about the ROG2 is its price. It sheds off its lofty price tag that it brought last year and has priced this phone at 37,999 rupees for the base variant. We would like to really try to encourage a lot of people, you know, try to uh, use the real good gaming phone. So we try to have this kind of very aggressive pricing. I think the second, uh, the second purpose is we believe, you know, uh, even for the, the premium flagship kind of you know, smartphone, I think uh, if they look at, you know, the LG phone too, okay, uh, I think they were envy. Okay, <laughs> they were angry. They were saying, "Wow, this is you know super." So I think that's another of our our target. The fingerprint scanner is in the display and it's blazing fast. There is a massive 6.59 inch AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution. The screen provides a good grip for gaming, and your thumbs will definitely not be the ones clashing. You can leave that to the gaming characters. The screen now supports up to 120 hertz of refresh rate. This is exceptionally useful during gameplay, but not really needed otherwise. There is Air Trigger 2 on this phone, which comes with a minimized vibration latency. We played PUBG for hours on this phone and found the use of the air triggers to be absolutely seamless and really improved the gameplay. There is a massive 6000 mAh battery, so there's no running out of juice on this phone. Asus promises 7.1 hours of PUBG and it has easily lasted us a good 5-6 to six hours with notifications enabled. There are two charging ports, both of which support Quick Charge 4, which is a big plus. But the phone misses wireless charging. We played a mix of games and the phone didn't heat up, not for an hour at least. And all of this power comes with the premium chipset powering this beast, which is the Snapdragon 855 Plus. We now have seen it on the other phones as well, but the ROG2 makes the most of the chipset's gaming capabilities with immense power efficiency. The phone runs on basically a stock Android experience with Zen UI over it. The wallpapers on this phone are to a gamer's liking. There is a Game Genie space where alerts, calls, brightness and other settings can be adjusted for each game and there's a specific X mode as well. All gaming accessories come separately and are not included in this. They start from around 2000 rupees and go up to 20,000 rupees. The ROG2 gets a 48 megapixel rear camera coupled with a 13 megapixel wide angle lens. The shots we took from this phone were impressive. There was adequate depth and details in the shots. The front camera clicks sharp selfies in daylight with a 24 megapixel shooter. The Cellguru verdict. Asus brings premium specifications to robust hardware. If you are not a gamer and want a high performance phone that will go the extra mile, this is a good phone to go with. It is the current king of specs and if you are a gamer, you will love the power and gameplay this phone offers and will be able to make the most of it. Priced well, this is one phone that manages to come out of the pure gaming niche. So that then was our very special show, including the India Mobile Congress, some fantastic phones and a whole lot more. But do remember, I promise you this every week and I keep this promise. If today was fantastic, next week will be great. And the next week after that will be jaw dropping. That is my promise. See you next week on the show.